Hey, it's 2021. I'm going to answer one of the most common questions that a lot of brand new YouTubers have, and that is how to use YouTube's video editor. Let's jump in. We're going to head into YouTube right away. We're not going to waste any time. Let's take a look at exactly how you go about using YouTube's video editor. Content here on Creator Fundamentals is made possible by our sponsors. Today's video is sponsored by Soundstripe. Soundstripe offers thousands of high quality audio tracks to take your content to the next level level. And now Soundstripe has leveled up their service once again. Introducing Soundstripe Video. Soundstripe Video offers over 70,000 HD, 4K, and even 5K video clips to take your content to the next level. And with the introduction of video, Soundstripe now offers music, sound effects, and videos on one convenient platform. And with their curated video playlists, you're now able to find exactly what you're looking for in far less time. And for a limited time, you can use the promo code CREATORCREW to save 20% off your subscription. Now is the time to go pro with Soundstripe. So when you're logged into YouTube, go to your channel. This is what you're going to see, something like this. You're probably not going to see my channel, but you get the idea. We're going to go into either Manage Videos or Customize Channel. They'll both bring you into YouTube Studio. This is the back end of YouTube that allows you to uh, get to all your settings and everything like that. Now, the thing that we want to do from here uh, in order to use the YouTube video editor is to uh, click on an individual video. So if you want to make changes to a video, uh, you do need, in fact, to upload it to YouTube first. So if you have a video and you want to make changes, you can go to one of those videos and you can click on the pencil icon. And this is where you're going to see the link to get into YouTube's video editor. So over here on the left, we have details for the video analytics, and then we have editor. We're going to click on that. And this is going to bring us in to the editor that YouTube provides. Now, there's some very important things to understand with YouTube's video editor, some of which may disappoint you. YouTube's video editor is not created to be a full-fledged video editor that you can make all your videos with. That is not its intended purpose. They do call it the video editor, which leads people to believe that in fact they could edit their videos with it, but it doesn't quite work out that way. There are some limitations. I'm going to go through and show you everything that it does, plus answer some common questions in terms of things that it does not do. So this is the interface. When you come into this right off the bat, you're going to see the timeline at the bottom. It's going to show you the video track and it's going to show you the audio track. This is what we have down here. And you'll see that if you push play, hey, I just this little icon will move across and it'll show you where you're at. On the right hand side here, we have the ability to zoom. So if you want to get close into a particular section, you can use this to drill into the video. But, uh, from here, we're going to take a look at what each one of these rows does and how you're going to use that to edit a video. Now, the first thing that you can do with this feature is trim video. So if you're doing a live stream or you realize there's a part in a video that you want to take out, this is where you can come and edit stuff out of your videos. This is a really important fact that I want you to understand that YouTube's video editor is designed to allow you to remove things, not to add things. The reason that it exists is to allow you to make corrections in cases where you have a copyright claim or some type of other content that needs to be removed, and it will allow you to do that without actually having to take the entire video down. Now, that's very important because a lot of people think that they can go in and edit videos with this, but that's not the point of the YouTube video editor. It's simply a tool to allow you to make copyright corrections without having to lose all the views and traffic and uh, interaction with that video by having to delete it and fix it and then re-upload it. So YouTube's video editor is designed to help you remove things. That means when we look at some of the common questions, there are things that you simply cannot do. We're going to cover those in just a moment. But jumping back into the editor, let's look at some of the things that you can in fact do. 
So when you're in the editor, this is where you're going to be able to trim the video, like I said, in order to make trims to an existing video. Over here on the left, it says trim. You need to click the trim button. That's going to bring you into the edit options. You'll notice that when you do that, in the bottom of the video, you have this option that says split, cancel, or preview. Now, when this first starts, you'll see you have this light gray bar, and this is actually your progress bar that's going to move through the video. And then you have this blue bar. Now this blue bar will appear at the beginning and end of the video and anywhere you place this mark and then hit the split button. You'll notice if I hit split, it's going to create a blue line and that's going to stay there. And that's basically split this into two separate pieces. Once you have these blue lines, they work similar to each other. The one at the beginning, if you hover over it and drag, it's going to remove or trim the front end of the video off. Anyone that is in the middle here, it is going to allow you to make a selection in either direction that is going to remove the part that you've grayed out. Now, something that's a little counterintuitive here, uh, when I first started using this editor and I saw this X, I was like, okay, well, you highlight this and you hit X and it deletes it. That is not the case. If you hit this X, it will remove this particular edit. So in theory, if you came through and you found a bunch of different areas that you wanted to uh, make changes to and you could change that and do all that and at the end you wanted to trim it off, you would go there uh, and make all those changes. And then in order to see what the video looks like with these proposed changes in place, you would click preview. Now, when you click preview and you hit play, it's automatically going to play your video without those additions. So if we put the cursor at the beginning and we hit play, you'll see that it immediately jumps to that. Together, it's only going to play the portions the that are not grayed out, the country, and that will allow you to preview the video. Now, in, you haven't made any changes yet. If you want to get rid of all this, you can simply go up here in the upper left-hand corner and exit the editor. Otherwise, if you click save in the upper right hand corner, that's going to lock in these changes. Now, when we're talking about live streams, there's an, another option that you can do when it comes to saving these. If you have made a live stream and you want to take portions of that live stream out for purposes, you know, to repurpose sections of the video, maybe you said something that sounded really awesome and you want to make that its own video, you do have the ability ability to come up here in the upper right hand corner click on these three dots and go and choose save as new that is going to leave the original video intact as is and it's going to apply your 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 edits to a copy of this video and save it as a brand new video on your channel now that's going to be helpful if you want to repurpose content as I mentioned earlier if you have a two hour live stream and you want to put make a couple three or four minute videos by taking sections of that live stream and sharing them with your audience this is a great way to be able to repurpose your content by coming in here making your edits and then going and choosing save as so that is how basically how you're going to use the editor like I said when you're trying to get in here you know uh, granularly you can certainly zoom in and identify areas where you know there was silence or something in your live stream a million different ways that you can do that but it is going to allow you to take sections out now you also have the ability uh, it says here the audio track can't be added because the user is in the read only mode so again in order to make any changes down here we're gonna click edit trim and then down here so that is really interesting once you've made an edit to the video portion of this it won't let you make any changes to the audio. So if we're outside of all those edits and we cancel our trim, then you can come in and make changes and add clips. Now this is going to come in handy when it comes to copyright. If, they, if they've identified part, you know, the music or something in your video that has to be removed, you can choose to replace that audio with music. Now, the thing to consider, if you happen to have copyrighted music in the background and you're talking, you're not going to be able to split the copyrighted audio from your uh, your narration. So you're going to just have to take that entire section of audio out and replace it with something or just leave it silent. So that's definitely something to consider. Uh, but this does give you the option to take offending audio out of your video without having to take the video down. And that, of course, is YouTube's uh, purpose for this tool. 
Same thing with the ability to add a face blur or custom blur, which is going to let you pick a section of the video and blur a face. So again, if you have a video up, it's getting a ton of traffic and somebody says, hey, I don't want my face in your video, you can come in here and fix that video uh, by blurring out their face without having to take the video down. And again, YouTube is trying to maintain and secure as much watch time as possible. They don't want you to have to delete a successful video because of some little thing like a copyright or somebody's face that shouldn't be in your video. So they've given you tools to prevent people from having to delete those videos. And then in addition to that, this is also where you're gonna come in and add your end screen elements. Now your end screen appears in the last 20 seconds of your video. Not sure if this particular video has one, but you don't need an end screen template in order to end your video. You can go to the end of your video and add things like a playlist or a video. So we do uh, best for viewer. And then we jump down here to to get in and we'll see that if we, let's see create your support to play all the funds from the app are going support the and it's very common to have what i would consider some flaky behavior from the video editor especially when you're adding and removing things on a regular basis typically what would happen if you see down here we've added this end screen element Normally, it would preview it on the All screen the when the cursor the gets to it, but every once in a while, it gets kind of flaky. So for the sake of this tutorial, we're going to discard our changes and we're going to come back in and uh, show you what that should look like because it just seems to lose its mind sometimes. So if you're in there, you're trying to make edits, you're not seeing what you're expecting to see, just understand that's actually a pretty common thing that seems to happen in the editor. But we're going to try this again. We're going to do a playlist. We're going to say... Uh, YouTube tutorials, see how that appears, and you get this gray box over the area. So a couple things. You have the full 20 seconds to be able to add your end screen, but you're not required to leave it in the full 20 seconds. If you want to trim this down to like the last 10 seconds, you can do that. Plus these end screen elements can be moved around. They can be resized. Uh, so depending on how you arrange your end screen, uh, you can determine which items you want to put. Now, the one thing to consider is typically I would not encourage you to put an end screen element that's going to cover your face because that just doesn't really look good at the end. It kind of makes it look like you weren't prepared. Uh, but there's a couple different end screen options. We have this is a playlist. You have the ability to add a single video where you can select a specific video or you can let YouTube decide the best video for the viewer. Uh, and if you don't really know which video to share with them, that's a great thing to do. And also you have the option to add a subscribe button. Now this is gonna be this round button here. It shows you the placement of the round icon. And then when you hover over this particular element, a rectangular subscribe box is going to pop up. So this white bar is where that is going to display when it pops up. So this is something that at the end you can let them know, hey, you know, click on that subscribe button. When they hover over this, they're going to get a red subscribe link in order and have the ability to subscribe. So each of your end screen elements can show up at different times. I would typically put them all at the same time, uh, to, unless you have something really uh, um, involved going on in your end screen. But you can do that by just grabbing them and dragging them so they're all the same length. Again, these changes don't go into effect until you click that save button. So you want to make sure that you do that as well. At any time, if you're making, you want to make changes, you'll notice that each one of these elements, when you click on it, it, uh, it identifies itself as blue. You can come up here and you can click the delete button. That gets rid of it. You also have undo and redo up here as well. So if you've done something that you don't want to do, you can always fix that. And again, if at any point in time you're concerned that you've done something wrong and you want to undo everything, you can always click the back button. It'll say discard changes, yes, and that'll exit out of the video without having to impact anything in that particular video. Going back into the video editor, just to take one last look, we've pretty much covered everything in terms of what you can do with the video editor. Now, the common questions that we always get on this are, how do you add text to your video uh, after it's uploaded to YouTube? The answer is, you cannot add text. I always get the question, how do you put two videos together with the YouTube video editor? You cannot add two videos together. In fact, 
any question that involves you adding something to your video, you cannot do it in YouTube's video editor. That's really important to understand. You want to grab some type of editor where you make those changes prior to upload. Depending on what type of device you are creating videos on, there are plenty of editors out there that you can choose from. If you're on iPhone, I highly recommend you download iMovie. Uh, if you are on Android or iPhone, you can also use Premiere, uh, Adobe Rush, which is comes with uh, Premiere Pro if you're using that as an editor. Uh, plus, there's a number of different uh, free versions out there. I believe Android also has a free app called UCut, which is pretty decent and allows you to make edits. Uh, on desktop, you can use Filmora, which is a great one. I think it's like 60 bucks for a lifetime license on that, which is great. Uh, there's also an editor that's built into Windows 10. If you search for uh, video editor, I think if you search for photos and you go into the photos uh, service that's part of Windows 10 and you select a video in that area, you actually get some options to edit the video. So plenty of ways to do that before you upload to YouTube, but it's important to know if you want to add anything or you want to splice two videos together or you want to do overlays or anything like that, you're going to have to do it before your video makes it to YouTube. The only exception to this is kind of a hack that I have uh, done a little bit of experimenting with and that is if you absolutely don't have another video editor and you want to figure out a way to edit your videos on YouTube here's what you can do if you record your entire video in the order that you want the individual clips to be put together and you leave your camera running and even if you make mistakes you just record one single video file if you do that, then you can upload your video to YouTube as that one single video file. Make sure it's unlisted or private. And then you can go in and use the YouTube video editor to remove all of your mistakes. That's going to leave you with one whole entire video. Uh, and it does allow you to take advantage of YouTube's video editor where you can remove stuff to edit your video to some degree. Now, this is obviously not ideal. This is a last uh, resort type of approach to editing videos. But you can do it that way as long as you have all of your footage in the proper order in one uh, entire clip where you can then just remove all the mistakes and the ums and things like that on YouTube's video editor itself. This video is sponsored by TubeTemplates.com. For affordable YouTube graphics, there's no better choice than TubeTemplates.com. And right now, use promo code CFSAVE25 to get 25% off your entire order. And hey, 2021 is going to be an excellent year for YouTube creators. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel by clicking that subscribe button and ringing the bell so you're notified on future content. And hey, I'm going to put a playlist on screen now full of YouTube feature tutorials. Definitely check that out to learn how YouTube works and how you can leverage it to grow your channel. Also, like I said, right below me, that round circle is a subscribe button. Hover over it, click the subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next video.